Okay, so let's move on to a discussion about the dot notation. All right, so it turns out the dot notation is super useful and super commonly used in Java. The left hand side of the dot can be a little bit more complicated than um, just what you would use with just a variable. You can do a lot more with it. It's basically, a, uh, it can be a path that brings you to an object. So for instance, we were talking about spouses and people and, and that sort of thing before. So if you've got a class called person, you can define, you can have an attribute for that person, their name. You can also have uh, a, an association with another object called spouse, okay, as an attribute. So we can have connections between objects that are defined within the class, the blueprint for an object, okay? But notice that uh, <laughs> these are the same thing. Um, th there is this sort of internal connection between objects that are possible through the blueprint. Okay, and that's acknowledged within object-oriented programming. So for instance, let's say that we have a person uh, object named Jim, and we initialize that object, okay? We, um, we instantiate it as an object based on person by giving it, use, calling the constructor and calling and, and naming the object as Jim Davis or Davies. So we can, we can do an inquiry about Jim's name, and we can say Jim.name, and that will return a value if we've got a, a method inside. Um, or so no, we can we can ask, sorry, this isn't with a method. In, in this case, we'd be basically just asking what is the attribute name, okay? It's right there, and we would be able to get it. Now, we can also, could we do an inquiry about Jim's spouse's name? So there's an object associated with Jim, Jim's spouse, okay? So what would we do? We would say Jim, and we want the attribute spouse, okay? Spouse is also a person, and so we can ask for Jim's spouse's name as well. So we can have Jim.spouse.name. So name is associated with spouse, and spouse is associated with the object Jim. So Jim has an attribute called spouse, and that spouse has an attribute called name. So what if Jim is single? That is, Jim.spouse is null. If we did this, then we would trigger a null pointer exception, okay, which is basically an error. So we would want to assume that Jim is, or we're assuming that Jim is not single. So we would test for something like this. We would say Jim.spouse is not equal to null, okay? We would want to do a test like that before calling up um, Jim.spouse like that, okay, uh, to find out Jim's spouse's name if, if Jim doesn't have a spouse. So we want to assume that um, that the, the marriage itself is mutual, that uh, basically Jim's spouse has a spouse, okay, and that's also not null, okay, so that's another assumption that we're taking right here. So then I guess the question, you know, sort of all this circular um, connections going around, what does this mean? Well, basically, if we were to do Jim.spouse, so we take Jim's attribute called spouse, which is another person, that person has an attribute called spouse, okay, and we can ask for the attribute name of that spouse, okay, what would that be? That should be Jim's name. So that should be effectively Jim.name. All right, so these sort of interconnections between objects is one of the, the reasons why people um, use uh, Java and object-oriented languages. So here's, here's another example where we've got students, courses, and faculty, okay, and we've got connections between them. So we've got a class called student, we've got a class called course, we've got a class called faculty. And the student has a defined ID based on you know, a string type, okay? And there are courses, a, a, an array of courses associated with that student. Then beyond that, we have uh, classes called course. And, uh, and that course has a, a string title or a title of type string, and there are faculty, professors, that are associated, in this case one, that's associated with teaching that course. Next, there are different faculty, and then those different faculty also have names, okay, and they also, each faculty will have an array of courses associated with them, okay. You can see that there's these connections, okay, between these different objects, or well, these different classes and then the objects that, that result from them. So, Aggregation links between classes constrain how you can navigate among those classes or between those classes, okay? 
there isn't a direct connection between student and faculty. That student to faculty connection is done through the course, for instance. Okay, so in the context of class student, writing CS denotes the array of registered courses, right? There's an array right there. CS, okay, is of type courses. So CS is going to be an object of, of type sort of course, but an array of courses. CS with a square bracket I, okay, is going to indicate a particular, a specific course within that array, okay, where each uh, item in that array has a title associated with it, okay, as well as a faculty or professor of faculty type. So then, uh, so we can see how, how there's these navigations that are going on. So let's, let's start, let's start with an example here, okay, so let's look at student. So student has a number of attributes, um, and so one of the, and then, so we've defined those, we're going to skip that for right now. Then we're going to have a method, okay, where the output of that method is a string, and we're going to be getting the ID for the student. So it's a method. We return the student's ID, okay, ID being one of the attributes, right? We had it up here. We can get the course title, all right, where we, um, we give a number for the, for the course, and we return for this student's course, it's an array, okay, um, so it's uh, an array CS of type course, and there's the, the, um, uh, the index for the array that's brought in as an input parameter right there, and we're going to ask for that course's title, and that's over here, this is in the course object, okay. And then we can get the instructor's name for that particular course. We can go, we can return a value of string, or we can return a string, we can get instructor name, we uh, have the number of the course inputted, and we return this student's course array, okay? And for that particular course defined by I, or indexed by I, we ask for the professor, okay, which we have type faculty, and that professor's name. All right, so now let's take a look at courses. So we uh, can have a method get title because we've been talking about that. And we return the courses, so this, th that particular object, okay, that particular course, that course's title, we return it like that. We can get the instructor's name. The name of the instructor is not defined, okay, in here. It's defined over here, okay, it's within the faculty class. The object that results from it in this case will be prof. Okay, and so we go return this prof, that's of type faculty, their name, which is this right here. And we can get the, the title of the particular course uh, that the instructor teaches, okay? So we get course title of the instructor, so the instructor's course, what, it's, what it is its title, we have an input parameter i, okay? So we go this, this refers to the course, okay? We ask for the professor. We ask for TE. TE is defined over here in the faculty class. And then we go dot I, okay, because we want to know uh, which which course it is, okay. And then, um, and then we're going to, actually that should be there. And then the, the title for it, okay, and the title is over here. All right, next up. So then we have um, then we have faculty, right there. So we have a method get name. We return the name associated with the faculty. So the professor's name. That's the object. This. We can get the professor's course title as an integer. Okay, that's that's what we pass in. And then what we do is we do uh, right. This is actually the better the, the right way to write it. Not like in the previous slide where I had to do that correction. So we go return this dot te. There's TE right there. It's an array. There's the I, that's the index right there. And then we ask for the title, which is right there. And there you have it, dot notation.